Hello guys and uh, welcome to my very first uh, video. Uh, today we're going to be uh, looking at automating your smelter. So first up, just quickly, we're going to go through how to make your smelter. You're going to need a lot of grout to make uh, these files, the seared brick. We'll just quickly skip through these and um, and you can pause it to, uh, to find out how to make each one of these and um, each of these you will need to build your smeltery. Um, some are used for different things. These two end ones are cosmetic, I believe. Make everything look quite nice. And um, yeah. So if we spin around here, you've got your 3x3 three three base. This is how they all start, usually countersunk. And that'll give you this. Um, well, the base with these will give you your smeltery. Now you need key components your controller, your um, sear tank for your lava. Um, drain and faucet. We manually click this. This is where everyone usually starts off at. Um, and as you can see, it's effective, but not really automotive. So that's where we come over to this fella right here. Now, basically the same, just with an extra um, drain and faucet. And to automate this fella, we're going to grab this fella right here. The redstone clock. Got a few on me here. So let's plonk him down there. It's got to be touching these faucets in order to interact with them. Underneath I have a hopper which leads into a, a chest and this is what automates, um, automates pulling the ingot once it dries out through the table into the chest. Very simple and it works well. On to the next one we have one, uh, this one here is basically very similar setup to this except for we have an extra four drains and four faucets and we're using the casting basins this time. Same hoppers and chest underneath to automate this. And we're going to plonk our uh, redstone clocks right in the middle of these uh, faucets. And as you can see we've got automation but um, the timers on these uh, redstone clocks tick over a little bit too quickly and um, to fill these basins so it takes uh, quite a few cycles through these timers to fill the basin um, which can cause FPS lag and that's something you don't want so uh, if you're not using it please get rid of them it'll help your server immensely or even on your single player world if you have too many of them then yeah so come on to this last one here and now we're getting into probably one of the higher end ways of automating your smeltery. Uh, the smelter is exactly the same as the previous one except for we're using RedNet. Now um, to get started in RedNet you're going to need a few things, cyan wool believe it or not, but uh, that is used to make our prototype on the wrench. Um, and you're going to need to cook some rubber balls or some rubber bars and that gives us raw plastic so raw plastic gives us plastic sheets which is used to make our red net cable red net cable is an awesome little thing this block here doesn't do anything in the world it only it looks great but um, it's only used to make this fella here which is the programmable red net controller very very nifty um, block this fella and also you're going to need a bookshelf that's right a bookshelf um, and it's used to make our historian. Um, it probably don't need it I don't think but uh, it looks very neat and um, we'll get to that right now. <coughs> so if we get our, uh, our red net controller and we'll plonk him down in the world right about there. Get rid of some stuff and we're going to need to sort our inventory out a little bit here. So we'll go ahead and connect this fellow up and we'll plonk our historian on top. So shift click and he'll come up and as you can see the line there indicates that nothing is happening it's a flat liner if you'd, if you'd uh, like to call it that so we'll plug him in at the back and um and yeah he's good to go now a few things with this red net cable is that um it has a few different modes um by right clicking on the red square we can change the mode as you can see down the bottom left set cable to force connection we can force force the connection to the smelter but um, that smelter block doesn't do anything so we're just going to go to the next one which is cable to cable cable to cable only and this uh, makes it look a little bit better a bit cleaner <coughs> and whatnot uh, but yeah, you just also have to be careful of clicking on these coloured bands. So by clicking on the coloured bands, you actually change through the colours now. You want to stick to the one colour, which we're sticking to, is white. If I can get back to it, <laughs> somewhere here. There we go. 
and um, that is uh, sort of like coding for this fella here for our uh, RedNet controller. I'm not going to get into that. I'm just purely going to show you how to use it to automate your smelter. So we go into here, and like I said, this guy will blow your mind uh, with the stuff it can do. I can't. Yeah, I, I don't know half of these things. Um, I know the basic things like the NOR gates and the handor gates, a few little things there. But uh, we're going to scroll right the way down until we get to our, where is it, our wave square timer. So if you click on that fella, you'll get um, some options up here. Now we want to leave this at CNST, which is constant. And we're going to middle click this, uh, oop, not right click. <clears throat> you can single click this um, to go up a unit at a time or right click it to go down a unit at a time or you can middle click with your mouse button and it'll go up 16 at a time we want to set this at about 90 um, I'm not a hundred percent sure on what each unit equals in time wise I think one click is a half a second perhaps um, yeah but we're looking for about 90 and you can play around with this time to find the best time for you now this block is um, directional sensitive in the world so it has a front back top side so when we come over to the other side null means it's doing nothing so we're pretty much telling this um, we've got this side set but it's saying that I'm not doing anything I'm, I'm, I'm set for constant but I'm not doing anything so we'll want to change that, um, so that D equals down, up, front, back, and white was that colour we were referencing before, and that's why we need to keep those little bands on our red net cable to white. So that should indicate back, and there you go. Um, our historian's indicating work, it's saying, well, okay, we're pulsing on at this time, now we've pulsed off. And as you can see, it's filling these casting basins in uh, pretty much one hit. And we still have our automation down the bottom. And it'll cycle through again until it uh, hits another pulse and those uh, faucets will engage again. And, uh, and this is a good way of automating and, um, and saves you being here, having to look after it all. And it saves on that FPS lag. And you may think, well, hmm, you know, how come... Um, you know, four will cause lag, but uh, it probably won't with only four red net timers. Oh, sorry, redstone clocks. But um, but you're going to need a huge smelter. If you're serious about building and you need lots of uh, clear glass, you're going to need a serious unit, um, perhaps like this one. And we're here over at my multiplayer world, and as you can see, you can really go nuts with the smeltery. Using the RedNet uh, controller here, we're, we're able to control quite a large smeltery. I've also got AE set up, level emitters, uh, liquid tesseracts to supply fuel to this fella. As you can imagine, he, he really chews uh, the lava, making clear glass, uh, which is what this system does. We, we got this designed to, to make clear glass we need a lot of it for building and um, this is what we got to to make it so you can really really get serious with the red net gear and controlling your smeltery so uh, hopefully I was helpful and and yeah you go nuts <laughs>